Hi, my name is Chad Saladin, and this is my wife, Chris, and we watch Peregrine Falcons, and we just want to let everybody know that um, even though Peregrine Falcons are off the endangered list, there's still protections out there for them. It's still illegal to disrupt a nesting bird of prey. Um, so we just want to get that out there, even though some of the uh, uh, wildlife laws are being lessened. Um, uh, we, we still want to we still want to educate people that uh, to be aware of that of uh, disturbing a bird of prey. And certainly, people that love these birds can sometimes love them to death, and they have to realize that um, that there are things that you can do that could get in the way of their process, their nesting cycle, and things like that. And there are certain times of just even a minor disruption of a peregrine falcon nest can cause a disruption of the whole nest. It can it can cause them to fail in their nesting. Um, and, you know, I think a huge part of it, too, is understanding the bird itself. A lot of people don't understand that when a bird nests on an apartment building or a building where there are people around, that that bird is going to become very aggressive at that nesting time in defense of their young. And it's all protection of their young. They're not looking to attack humans. They're not dangerous to humans. But they are going to defend with everything that they have and protect their young. So, um, so a lot of people who don't understand that might become hostile towards the birds thinking that they're in danger or their their animals are in danger their dogs or something like that um, you know it's not easy to have birds around people sometimes aggressive birds like this but it's very important to understand that they're not looking to hurt humans they're just looking to defend their young and, and also too during when they get ready to fly which is called the fledge um, you know we try to be whenever we try to be there whenever they're ready to fly to help them sometimes we've uh, had to help uh, help them get them back up to the nest site. Uh, we don't try. We don't pick them up unless we positively have to. We like to let them work it out. So uh, we've had cases over the years where people have harassed them when they're on the ground. Uh, one time somebody took one home. So we just like to tell people that uh, you know if you, if you see one and we're not around, just sort of just get out of the way and let it work it out itself. Uh, and like Chris said. The parents would be very defensive, so they could they could hit you, and that that irritates people. Uh, we had somebody in Columbus that tried to knock one out of the sky with a broom. He was on a building, and they had, he was they were cleaning windows, and she was dive bombing them because the young were up there, and she was just defending them. And he got out a broom and actually hit her. Um, so you know, uh, we just try to to, to tell people uh, to um, you know beware of them if you're in an area where they are and during fledge season. So. Um, and just, just, just leave them alone and, and, and just let them work it out themselves. Yeah, we're realizing more and more that we can't always be at every site during pledging. Uh, sometimes those pledges are coordinated, and so we're going to miss some pledges. Um, we, we like to be there because we like to help them out if they need help. But we usually do just watch them, and if they're not in immediate danger, we let them work it out, and they're really very capable of doing that. And the parents know exactly what they're doing, too. They know how to get them to a spot where they're going to be safe. So there are times where, for example, we might even just be standing next to a road so that they don't head over towards the road instead of trying to pick them up. Or, um, you know, just uh, maybe blocking an area that we don't want them to go into so that they don't just walk their way into danger. Um, and, and there are times where it does necessitate picking them up, but usually uh, they, they often are able to work it out. Yeah, if they're injured, if they're obviously injured, then I, you can see if we're not around you, somebody's got to... If you have a carrier or some way to get them, take them to a rehab center, uh, we understand that. But a lot of times they could, they could just work it out themselves. You know, they're going to look to get up and, and um, get back as high as they can. It's really the, the best situation is to not have to intervene, but to be able to be watchful of any dangers for them. And that, I think that's the best way that we can be helpful a lot of the time. Yep.